Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? Can I get a... We all know McDonald's as one of the world's most famous restaurants. But did you know there have been some truly shocking events at some of their locations? Here are the top 10 McDonald's disaster stories. No, God! Florida man causes chaos. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! Florida has become notorious for strange and shocking events taking place around the state, with the Florida Man meme becoming widespread, showcasing the various crazy happenings and occurrences that take place within state lines. McDonald's is no exception to the Florida Man meme, as seen here. On December 31st, 2018, a Florida man was arrested after assaulting a McDonald's employee. The altercation began after a verbal disagreement about straws, of all things to get angry about. The man, Daniel Willis Taylor, who was 40 years old at the time, began verbally berating an employee at the cash register, yelling at her after he couldn't find a straw. He then started physically attacking the employee, who understandably retaliated in self-defense. Thankfully, there were no serious injuries. Oh, right. Well, that is good to know. Taylor pleaded guilty to two counts of battery and served 60 days in jail. He was also fined $1,000, sentenced to 120 hours of community service, and had to stay away from the two women he attacked. The reason for the straws not being available was a new environmental ordinance that only granted straws upon request. Maybe ask for a straw next time before you start attacking people. With an increasing number of restaurants no longer offering straws, let's hope that no more violence comes from it. Cop pulls gun at a drive-thru. Squid lobster! Oh yeah! Drive-thrus are one of the most convenient and helpful parts at any McDonald's restaurant, offering a fast and convenient choice for anyone looking for a quick Mickey D's fix. We can all get impatient waiting at the drive-thru at times, and this can be particularly frustrating when you have somewhere important to be. However, one Georgia police officer took things way too far in the drive-thru. In 2013, a young man named Ryan Mash was going through a McDonald's drive-thru with friends when a man yelled at him to stop holding up the drive-thru. Through. The man then held a gun to Ryan's window and repeatedly screamed the phrase, Do you know who I am? at him and his friends. While this would have been a horrible thing for anyone to do, what makes things worse is that the person was revealed to be Scott Buemi, a 25-year veteran at the DeKalb County Police. I'm very disappointed in you. This is never something a police officer should be doing, and his department certainly agreed with this. Buemi lost his job and was given 10 years probation because of the incident. While nobody was hurt, this was definitely a frightening scene, and a reminder that waiting in the drive-thru should never be that serious. This is a message for everyone to stay safe and alert the next time you decide to use the drive-thru. Shooting caused by lack of bacon. Bacon? Really? We get it. Some people have an intense passion for bacon. The succulent meat is truly one of the internet's most favored foods. However, one Michigan woman, Shanika Monique Torres, aged 30 at the time, took this passion for bacon much too far. It's too much! It's too much! The year was 2014 when she fired gunshots into a drive through window at a McDonald's in Grand Rapids, Michigan, all because her double cheeseburger didn't include the bacon she asked for on two different orders. After ordering a burger for the first time, the woman noticed that the bacon she ordered wasn't on it, but didn't think much of it. When she came back later that night and ordered a second burger, the bacon she asked for was once again omitted. She took serious offense and began shooting with her firearm into the drive through window. The police were called and quickly arrived at the scene. The woman was of course arrested by police. In court, her attorney argued that the shots were fired by accident and had no connection with the bacon induced rage she was in. However, the jury did not agree, and she was later sentenced to three to seven years in prison for the crime. While being mad about your order being messed up is perfectly understandable, this is another example of when the customer takes things way too far. Employee sells illicit substances at McDonald's. Infiltrate the dealers, find a supply. Today's economy can be tough on everyone, and many people turn to side hustles to pay their bills and get by, especially when working minimum wage jobs. In 2014, one McDonald's employee, 26-year-old Shantia Dennis of Pittsburgh, decided to start a side hustle on the wrong side of the law by selling illicit substances while she was working. We need the money. Customers looking for these substances would ask for a boy toy, or say the phrase, I'd like to order a toy, at the drive-thru window. The substances were in 
included in Stamps Inside Happy Meal boxes for the price of $80. Undercover cops discovered this operation and arrested Dennis, confiscating numerous bags of illicit substances. This was not the only instance of this happening at the time, with another operation being found out in the nearby town of Murraysville, Pennsylvania. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reached out to the location for comment on the matter, however, no comment was given. We're all for starting your own side business at work, but it would be wise to keep things on the legal side. With drug epidemics ravaging many cities and communities in North America, this endeavor was putting people in danger, and fortunately, it was discovered and shut down in quick succession. Man brings raccoon into McDonald's. Who left the door open? No, no, no! The last thing that people want is for their morning breakfast to be interrupted by an uninvited furry guest. Well, back in January of 2019, a man in San Francisco brought a deceased raccoon into a local McDonald's, causing quite the panic within the store. Apparently, a local man named Chris Brooks was getting his breakfast before work when he witnessed the event. The man who brought the raccoon inside was reportedly screaming for help, causing a considerable disturbance before placing the raccoon on the table next to the cash register. There were quite a few customers in the restaurant at the time, so the incident caused quite the stir. This is one way to ruin anybody's appetite. The police quickly responded and the man who brought the creature into the restaurant was evaluated for mental health issues. The restaurant was immediately closed and sanitized in the hours following before opening back up later in the day. Mental health struggles are a hugely relevant concern in today's world, and in this case, the man who committed the act was mentally unwell. We must ensure that people are properly taken care of and attended to, as more incidents like this can very easily happen in the future as well. Employee spikes cop's drink. Don't spit in that cop's burger. Yeah, thanks. Roger, police bet. This list is full of things that belong in the category of things never to do at work, and this next entry is absolutely one of them as well. Here we have another case of an employee causing trouble at their workplace. We've all heard stories before of employees sabotaging customers' food. In this case, during one of his shifts, Trevor Hockaday of Kansas spiked a visiting police officer's drink at the McDonald's he worked for in Iola, Kansas, near Kansas City. A police officer received an order of food and drink from the drive-thru and later felt sick after consuming the beverage. Poison! One of Hockaday's co-workers came forward and confessed that Hockaday spiked the officer's drink with a peroxide-based cleaner, making the officer feel ill and experience flu-like symptoms. Though the officer didn't feel anything at first, he began feeling the symptoms days later and later recovered. The motive for Hockaday committing this act was unknown, and he was fired from his job at McDonald's and arrested on the charge of felony aggravated battery of a law enforcement officer. It would be wise for all employees to avoid behavior like this. The the owner of the McDonald's location stated, In our restaurants, nothing is more important to us than the safety and well-being of our customers. Plane touches down at McDonald's. What did you say? We all feel the need for speed sometimes, and would love to fulfill our flying fantasies. However, this amateur aviator was in for more than he bargained for when he crashed into a McDonald's parking lot. The good news is we'll be landing immediately. The bad news is we're crash landing. In 2014, 41-year-old Michael Ray Martin of Louisiana was piloting his single-engine prop plane when it crashed down in the city of Monroe. Aviation administration workers said that there was a problem with the aircraft's fuel before it clipped some trees and finally plunged into the McDee's parking lot. According to officials, the plane was meant to land at the nearby Monroe Regional Airport, but never made it as far as that. The plane was taking a test flight after some repairs were made when the engine gave out in mid-air. Martin was was airlifted from the crash site and was taken to a nearby hospital to treat his injuries, and no one else was injured in the crash. This was extremely lucky, as McDonald's was one of the busiest places in the area, with many people regularly coming and going, partly due to the office building located across the street. This entry shows the dangers that go along with being a small plane pilot. A haunted McDonald's? Things that seem supernatural actually have a perfectly logical explanation. This next entry is for all the horror and mystery enthusiasts out there. While there have been many stories about haunted houses and demons and spooky old locations and decrepit old houses, a McDonald's is the last place you'd expect to find a story like this one. In early 2020, police were called to a McDonald's in Pueblo, Colorado to investigate what employees called supernatural energy that was emitting from the restaurant. That's impossible. You know, I hate the 
word impossible unless it's immediately followed by the words ghost and protocol. According to the employees, at around 3.30 a.m. on the night shift, they heard something speaking in a strange language, what sounded like a dog barking and a phantom-like screaming noise. Many of the employees were so scared that they refused to go home until the sun came up in the morning. There were no other reports of similar sounds reported in the neighborhood that night, nor were any strange sounds or images found on the security video footage. Though police found no evidence of a disturbance, there were many theories that the demon was La Llorona, a Latin American legend that makes its presence known to large groups of people before disappearing. Another possibility is that the employees imagined the sounds, as it occurred during the time when people are most likely to report supernatural occurrences. Who knows the real truth? Somebody might have to call the ghost hunters to deal with this. Two men trash a McDonald's. TP her house. TP her house? Toilet paper, cover house and toilet paper. Now, we've all had a subpar dining experience at some time, but our anger is usually only expressed in a poor Google or Yelp review. Taking our displeasure out over a less than stellar dining experience should stay out of the realm of property damage and criminal acts. In May 2012, two customers of a McDonald's in Tennessee, however, took this further when they threw bricks at a McDonald's window because their burgers lacked a sufficient amount of onions, according to the pair. It's always wanting more. More, more, more! Sean Mosey, who is 23, and Christopher Slate, 21, were upset with McDonald's because their cheeseburgers had been messed up. Enraged by the fact that their orders were messed up and they were left without onions, they returned to the restaurant after becoming intoxicated and vandalized it. They hurled pieces of concrete and brick into the drive through window, as well as the window in the main dining area of the restaurant. Two employees unfortunately received minor injuries as a result of the two men's recklessness, but did not have to go to the hospital as a result. Both both men were subsequently charged with vandalism and felony reckless endangerment, with Mosey also facing a charge of public intoxication. Though it can be frustrating when people get your order wrong, it's important to remember that everyone makes mistakes, and missing some onions is no reason to commit a crime. Nine-year-old charged with armed robbery. What? what Considering the ages of the people involved, this entry is the most shocking of all, and it's a truly scary thought. While most nine-year-olds are playing video games or playing with their friends, this Illinois boy was charged with armed robbery, as well as carjacking. How is that even possible? I don't know. Nothing makes sense anymore. Back in 2013, a young boy and two teenage accomplices broke into a McDonald's restaurant in Chicago after stealing a 2003 Pontiac Sunfire earlier that night while carrying a pellet gun to commit the theft. The closest things most normal kids get to an event like this is playing games like Grand Theft Auto. A police chase followed the robbery, lasting only briefly before the nine-year-old and his teenage friends were swiftly caught and apprehended. While the older teenagers were charged with aggravated vehicular hijacking with a firearm and were charged with aggravated possession of a stolen vehicle, according to the police, charges were not held against the nine-year-old. The nine-year-old was instead put into the custody of the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services, which was a much better alternative for a nine-year-old than committing crimes on the streets of Chicago. Here's hoping that he received the help that he needed and started hanging out around better role models. Thanks for sticking around. We've got more videos just for you. So stay right here and check one out.